Hello everyone. Here we go with air conditioning. Yet another luxury that we have made for us. This can be defined as the science of conditioning atmospheric air in a confined space by simultaneously controlling temperature, humidity, motion of air and purity of air for human comfort and certain industrial needs. When we look at this thing this is very much similar to refrigeration whereas air conditioning is made for a bigger space and for a higher temperature here we see that here we have a confined space when we compare it with refrigeration it is a bigger space in refrigeration we have a small space and the temperature what we maintain there is in the order of around 0 degree centigrade or else even if we look at the freezing compartment it could be around minus 18 degree centigrade or so but here the temperature what we maintain is more the relationship is in both the cases we transfer the heat from a colder region to a hotter region and we use a refrigerant in both the cases and when we look at air conditioning it is mostly done for human comfort when do we feel comfortable with climatic condition in fact experiments were conducted to identify the comfortable condition they tried with uh, supplying more oxygen then um, varying the motion of air varying temperature and it is found that certain parameters in a particular range made people comfortable here we have certain temperature when the temperature is in the order of around 20 to 24.5 degrees centigrade most of us feel comfortable then about humidity when the relative humidity is 20 to 60 percent range it is a comfortable range when it goes beyond that it is a discomfort for people because when we feel hot we sweat and if the sweat is not taken to the atmosphere we feel uncomfortable when the air is humid when the air is humid it will not take the sweat or the water vapor into atmosphere then we will be feeling somewhat uncomfortable here we can understand this with another simple illustration here we have a cup of water in fact we have sugar in it I try to dissolve it but it doesn't because this cup of water has already taken enough quantity of sugar if you look at 100 milliliter of water can dissolve only around 180 gram of sugar in atmospheric temperature so once when it takes 180 gram of sugar it becomes saturated we cannot add sugar more to that one in the same manner atmospheric air can hold certain quantity of water vapor so if it is beyond that range it will not readily take the sweat or water vapor to the atmosphere that gives us some discomfort so the humidity range should be 20 to 60 percentage if it is beyond that we will be feeling uncomfortable here when we study about humidity we have heard about these instances hot and humid if it is hot and humid when it is hot we get sweat but as it is humid the sweat will not get evaporated to the atmosphere so we feel somewhat uncomfortable in the same way if it is hot and less humid it is hot we get sweat but it is less humid so atmosphere can take the water vapor or the sweat easily so we feel hot but we cannot see uh, sweat on our body because it generates sweat meanwhile it is taken readily to the atmosphere this case is actually need to be considered a bit seriously because if we don't notice the water content from our body gets evaporated easily and we become dehydrated so if in such cases we need to consume more water so humidity plays an important role in addition to that one motion of air every one of us could love to stand in breeze when we have a gentle breeze we love it like that 
when we have a motion of air in the order of around 1 to 2.5 meter per second, it is a comfortable range for us. In addition to this, purity of the air is also another important thing. It may not be noticed or it may not be felt at the moment when we get into a room if it is not pure, but after a duration, definitely that will not be comfortable for the person in that room. So these four are very important. Temperature, humidity, motion of air and purity of air. Not just these things. In addition to this, there are other parameters which are also uh, leading to the comfort zone. Especially when we look at age. When we look at age, uh, not everyone uh, feels the room comfortable when it is maintained at a, a particular temperature. Especially kids. They can um, be comfortable with the lower temperature. But for older people, they may not be that comfortable. So, age is an important factor. Then about health condition. So, it is also very important. Uh, uh, for different health condition, people feel in a different way. Then the clothing what we have. If we have a cloth, for example, if I have a woolen clothing, I can be very comfortable with low temperature. So, clothing is very important. The next thing is about activity what we involve. For example, if I am doing some heavy exercise and uh, if I am lifting some heavy load, in that case, we are doing a lot of activity and we generate more heat in our body and this heat should get dissipated. Only when this gets dissipated, we will feel comfortable. So, if you are doing a lot of work, in that, say, in that case, even if it is low temperature, we will be quite comfortable. But meanwhile, if you are sleeping or simply idly sitting, we will not uh, generate that much heat. So, our activity is also another important factor. Above all these things, uh, when we look at the geographic location, the location of people around the globe, in certain region, uh, people may feel that 10 to 15 degrees centigrade is quite comfortable for them. If it is beyond that, if it is 20 degrees centigrade, they feel that it is warm. But in uh, other regions, in certain regions, when it is uh, 15, 20 degrees, it is extreme cold, something like that. If it is around 30 degree, the people around there feel comfortable. So it is also based on the geographic location. So age, health condition, clothing, activity, then geographic location. These things are quite important even in the comfort zone. Then about, as we discussed, uh, among these four, temperature, humidity, motion of air and purity of air, temperature and humidity control is a prime thing. To take control of these two things in air conditioning, it is called enthalpy control. Temperature and humidity. Control over temperature and humidity is called enthalpy control. When you look at air conditioning, it is not just meant for one particular season. It is meant for summer or also even if it is winter. In certain places, winter is too cool. In that case, they need to get it warmer. So, there are different needs are there. All over, we call it as air conditioning. Here we have summer air conditioning. When it is summer air conditioning, we need to cool the air. Cool the air and also we need to dehumidify. Okay. We need to cool and dehumidify. Cooling and dehumidification should be done for summer air conditioning. On the other side, for winter air conditioning, it should be heating and humidification. Heating and humidification. So, these two are two different forms. Okay. In order to know these things better, if you learn about some terminologies, then that will be uh, giving us a clear picture. So we start with certain things. Atmospheric air. Atmospheric air, the air that we have in the atmosphere. That is called atmospheric air. We call the atmospheric air as dry air when it doesn't have any water vapor or it doesn't have any moisture. If it is not having any moisture, it is called dry air. Meanwhile, if uh, we add uh, water vapor or it contains uh, water vapor, that thing is called moisture. The water vapor present in air is called moisture. As we discussed, to a certain extent, water vapor can get added to the air in a particular temperature. If the air is containing the maximum quantity of water vapor that it can possess in the particular temperature, then it is called saturated air. Okay, The maximum quantity of water vapor is present in the air, then it is called saturated air. Then comes the relative humidity. Here also we have discussed about that thing, right? Humidity and relative humidity. Relative humidity, it is actually the ratio of water vapor present in air to the 
water vapor needed to make the air saturated. For example, for a particular quantity of air, a certain quantity of water vapor can get added. Okay. In meanwhile, we may have a condition with certain quantity of water vapor in it. Let us consider. For example, here we have uh, 10 gram. The maximum water vapor can be present in a quantity of air. Meanwhile, the quantity of air, uh, quantity of water vapor present is 2 gram. 2 gram water vapor is present, but it can hold up to 10 gram of water vapor. Then here it is 20% relative humidity. It is 20% relative humidity. In other way, if we can add more water vapor, say it to be 6 gram, 6 gram by 10 gram, it is 60% relative humidity. If we add further, it could go up to 10 gram. 10 gram. 10 gram is the maximum quantity it can have. 10 gram by 10 gram, that will give 100% relative humidity. That is the saturated air. That is the saturated air. So these things are very important to understand this thing. In addition to that, there are certain temperatures. We need to know about that one. The first thing is dew point temperature. The temperature at which the water vapor present in air condenses is called dew point temperature. When we have a air at particular temperature, if we cool it, when we cool it down at a particular temperature, certain quantity of water vapor present will condense. And that temperature is called dew point temperature. That is important here. Cooling, dehumidification. When we condense certain quantity of water vapor, that means that we are reducing the amount of water vapor present in the air. That is cooling and dehumidification which is done in summer air conditioning. Meanwhile, the other thing is dry bulb temperature. The temperature that is measured using a thermometer, atmospheric air, we can measure the temperature and that temperature is known as dry bulb temperature. And it is also meant as ambient temperature, the surrounding temperature. It could vary from season to season, from place to place. That is also called as ambient temperature. And another one is wet bulb temperature. If you look at the thermometer, it has a bulb at the bottom. Okay. If the bulb is covered with a wet cloth, a cloth is soaked in water and if it is covered, if it is covered, then we measure the temperature. What will happen? The air which meets the bulb is coming nearby the wet cloth and it gets saturated and it gives a temperature. Once when we cover the bulb with the wet cloth, the temperature what we get is the temperature which is somewhat like saturated air temperature. That is called wet bulb temperature. When we compare these two, wet bulb temperature and dry bulb temperature, we will be able to identify the humidity of the air. For example, if the humidity is very less, the humidity is very less, the wet bulb temperature, when we measure it, we will be able to find huge variation between that. The dry bulb temperature will be something like this. Wet bulb temperature, when uh, if it is humid, uh, less humid, when we have wet bulb temperature, it will give a less temperature for us. Okay, so when we compare this thing, we will be able to understand about humidity. If these two are equal, what if wet bulb temperature and uh, uh, dry bulb temperature are equal? That means that already the air is saturated. Even when we measure it without uh, covering the bulb or even if we cover it with a soaked cloth, both will give the same temperature. In that sense, the air is already saturated. So these things are very important in this uh, air conditioning. So, dry bulb temperature, wet bulb temperature, dew point temperature. Now, we study about uh, the types of air conditioners based on the arrangement of equipment. Now, we focus on summer air conditioning. We focus on summer air conditioning. We classify the air conditioners based on the arrangement of equipment. Here, we can broadly classify it into two. One is unitary and another one is central. Unitary air conditioner can be defined as um, the conditioning when we have the equipment fully or partly in the region where it is needed. For example, if I want to 
uh, air condition this room the unit which condition the air is present here itself entire thing or a part of it that is called as unitary air conditioning something like a, a window air conditioner or a split air conditioner those thing comes under uh, those thing come under this category meanwhile other one central air conditioning in central air conditioning these units which are needed to create the air conditioning is not placed in the room or the place where it is needed it is placed remotely that is called central air conditioning we can discuss on these things in detail in the coming video thank you